Good evening, and welcome to the Beer Money Sports Podcast. We're back. First episode since February, and I have a very special guest today. My friend from Long Island, New York, number one in Clemson, number one in my heart. Just kidding. He's a Mets fan, though. Daniel Ann Perkins Perkis. How's it going, Matt? What's up? Did you like that introduction? I did. I really appreciated that. There you go. All right. <laughs> Let's just jump right in. Why not? Sounds good to me. Um, what's your story? So, I'm Daniel question. Perkis. I'm, uh, I'm from the eastern end of Long Island, out in West Hampton. Uh, you know, big New York sports guy. I've loved sports all my life. Uh, I played soccer. I wrestled, and I played baseball in high school. So, always busy. Always love sports. You know, just having a good time down in Clemson. Uh, was looking for a big school, so I applied everywhere and uh, ended up at the best college in the country. So. You are damn right on that one. Um, yeah, so it's actually kind of crazy because I had an acquaintance from Tiger Vision. People that know me know I'm in the student TV station. And then through him, I met Christian, who's on the wrestling team. And then through Christian, I met Alex, who was the president of the wrestling team at the time. And then Alex, who was on my last episode, kind of brought me in. And now we're all really good friends. So it's, exactly, yeah. It's Alex kinda, and I have been a roommate since freshman year. And yeah. Keeping it strong all the way through. So, so uh, the big elephant in the room is this COVID outbreak going on. Uh, how, how are you handling it in New York and – you know, it was bad at first, especially up here. I mean, we got hit definitely the hardest out of everyone when it was, you know, bad quarantine started. It was like, yeah. I don't know if we're going to get out of this. Um, but I think we're handling it maybe the – like, Northeast is some of the best handling-wise of COVID. Uh, I know down south for you, it's a little different. I know you don't like me uh, considering Virginia down south, but it is. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, below the Mason Dixon, so I guess it counts. Yeah, but yeah, you know, I'm hoping we bounce back. <laughs> so you're, you're safe. Your family's safe. Oh yeah, everyone's we're good. healthy. We're good. good. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I'm at uh, summer camp right now, working summer camp that my dad runs, and you know things are actually going a lot smoother than I thought they were going to. So that's good. That's glad to hear. All right, we're done with that. Let's talk some sports. Um, you kind of touched on why you came to Clemson, but just touch on it again. You, you wanted a big school feel, right? Big school feel, just, you know, a lot of classic tradition. And with Clemson, you, you hit that right on the head. I yep. mean, everything is just tradition-wise. Uh, game day is sacred down there. It's awesome. And New York doesn't really, really have that. You know, like football wise. I mean, you, everyone's like, "Oh, why didn't you go to Syracuse?" I'm like, "That's not even a state school. <laughs> you know, I'm not gonna yeah. freeze to death for and paying through the roof." So yeah, Clemson's definitely where it was at. But you know, I I applied everywhere, so I'm happy. <laughs> South Carolina was the landing spot. Yeah, me too. Oh yeah. Um. All right. Pro pro sports teams. We're gonna hit them all. Yeah. Uh, you're a Jets fan. Uh, it's a sad life. It's a sad life. I'll put that <laughs> out there right away. Um, uh, seven and nine last season. Since I have my laptop, I'm going to pull up your picks so we can, we can go over them. Yeah. Uh, uh, get stuck. No offense, but. Honestly, I don't think it was as bad as, you know, it was supposed to be. You're, you're missing Darnold for those mono games. You got you got I, I out there. Mono mono L O L. That's <laughs> actually one of the points I wanted to, to yep. bring up. Because Sam Arnold had mono. And then you had mono. Then I had mono in January, yes. Yes. Or at least I assume I at the time it was like, Oh yeah, this is definitely mono. Now it's like, ooh, was it was it COVID? Yeah. <laughs> Never know. Uh the first time I met Daniel was the national championship. We were in New Orleans. <laughs> And yes. he absolutely hated me because I was, <laughs> I was directing me, Daniel, Alex, and Robbie to the stadium, and I couldn't find where it was. And he 
felt like crap. He had a fever. And I was just like, I think it's a little bit farther. We had already walked like two miles. So I was like, bro, just Google it. My phone's on 1%. I'm dying. And Matt's just like, yeah, no, I think it's up there. I'm like, yeah. what do you mean? Hey, <laughs> just, we found it. Yeah, we did find it. We, we, we did. So the only well. is that Daniel hates me. So <laughs> it's not true. Not true at all. <laughs> All right. Um, so, are you happy with the draft overall, Jeff's draft? You know, I am. I would have. I would have loved to have gotten like T. Higgins as a receiver. Yeah. But, you know, he's going right away in the second round, and we were too early in the first to have gotten him because we we needed a receiver, um, full on. Like that was that was like going in. I was like, this draft is stacked with receivers. And they just flew off the board. And the yeah. Jets the Jets did not – they ended up with a receiver from Baylor who he, – he seems, like, he seems good. You know how the teams always hype up their, their draft picks. So, yeah. um, But it's, it's no C.D. Lamb or Jerry Judy. But. So are you happy with Mekhi Becton in the first round? I am. Um, his highlights are ridiculous. He's just tossing yeah. people left and He's right. He's just an animal. Yeah. Um, I mean, all those guys are, you know, all those linemen, you're, you're, you're getting, you're getting what you're paying for. At, yeah. at least you hope. But yeah. Um, the, the Jets, uh, the seven and nine, I, I'll take it. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll take that. Especially so, we ended up being better than the Browns and that's all that matters. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, Alex is listening. So. Oh, I know. Um, Denzel Mims is the receiver you got. Yes. Yes. So um, like you said, your team's kind of, hype up who they get but if you look at his highlights too kids are nice yeah he's, yeah he's quick he's fast so uh, i would be happy with that but like you said t higgins cd lamb henry ruggs all those guys from alabama all gone yeah exactly so, yeah they, they they went off the board quick but um what, what's your season outlook what, what do you what are you thinking making the playoffs <laughs> uh, i mean before Cam signed with the Patriots, you still there? Yeah. Okay. Before Cam signed with the Patriots, I was, I was pretty optimistic because it was like the Bills are going to take the AFC East, but it could be close. You never know. Um, but now that Cam's on the Patriots, I, th- I think they're the favorite for the East. Um, but you never know with the Jets. Darnold could uh, – Surprise me. He's he's shown he's shown that he has potential, and with the right pieces, right defense. If if we keep Jamal Adams, I'm uh, I'm feeling God, all right. That whole saga. How do you feel about that whole saga? It, it it's very upsetting, <laughs> very upset. And I don't know if you saw all the the things going down with the owner right now. Yeah, I saw. I didn't read into it, but I saw that he's getting in trouble. Oh, he yeah, he's allegations. Uh, not looking good right now. Jamal Adams calling him out too. So, um, will the, I have this question in here? Will the Jets ever figure it out? <laughs> yes. I mean, I'm coming for your throat here, but I I do think so. I feel like just as a New York team, any New York team could could easily end up being elite, one hundred percent. I don't care who you are. You're in the New York. The market's there. Yeah. yeah. So. All right. I guess we'll get away from the Jets. <laughs> Done. Check. Um, basketball team. Knicks fan? So, I've never been huge in the NBA. Um, okay. So, I'll watch every so often. I, I mostly will watch, like, the, you know, the big games. I'll watch that. But a couple of years ago, once I got into college, I was like, I need to settle down, pick a team. I was going to pick either the Knicks or the Nets. Yeah. And I, in my head, I literally said this to my roommate. I said, the Knicks have more potential to bring in that big time star. So I'm going to go with the Knicks. That off season, Kyrie Irving, Kevin Durant to the Brooklyn Nets. So... Just can't 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 catch a break here. Yeah, the Knicks were rumored to get 
like LeBron, Zion, I mean, Kyrie, everybody you could think of, and they got nobody. Yeah. Yep. That's that's how that's how it goes. <laughs> uh is James Dolan the worst owner in sports? Um I yeah, yeah. <laughs> I I really do think the Knicks are the most poorly like poorly run team in all of sports. I know people will argue the Browns are awful. But the Redskins Knicks, that aren't even the Redskins anymore. The Washington football team. The is, as of this morning, the Washington <laughs> football team is their name. It's fantastic. I love that. I hope <laughs> they keep it. I hope they keep it. <laughs> but but yeah, um it, the, the Knicks are they're so poorly run. Because you have so much potential there. That is the best arena in basketball. You it's, have it's just New York. It's New York, and you're you're running it that poorly. It's it's terrible. Uh, will the Knicks ever win a title? I mean, they I know they won back in 1932 with uh, Phil Jackson, but they'll 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 pull it off years from now. Years from because now. it's New York, right? They'll pull it off, especially NBA. You you've seen with NBA. And just any one star player could change a whole team. Yeah. So, and it's it's not like New York isn't a great landing spot. They'll they'll come. They'll come. All right, uh, Rangers or Islanders? So that's the same deal as uh, as basketball. I I settled on the Islanders. You know, being from Long Island, um, great fans, great fans. Um, they're. They go all out, and so yeah, the Islanders is uh, that's that's the team that I say I follow. So hockey's my favorite sport. Uh, I have a hockey podcast. What rocking my Caps jersey? Right, right. Uh, you're welcome for Barry Trotz, your head coach. Yeah, he's he's great. He really is. He's awesome. He's the real deal. Um, are you excited? I mean, everybody's excited for the playoffs, but I know hockey's kind of on the back burner with baseball coming up. So right, I I mean. I love what they're doing. I think it's going to be sweet. Um, I, I, I really uh, think there's I'm, – I'm going to be watching. After going months without sports, I'm definitely going to be watching as much hockey as I can. Um, you play the Panthers in the first round. Are you confident? Uh, it, it, could go any, it could go anywhere. It could, go, it could really go anywhere because these guys have just been off. You know, like – yeah, you you just don't know. There's no momentum. There's nothing. It's just a fresh start. It's going to be interesting. All right. Well, I'm excited to watch hockey with you because anytime I can bring someone who's like on the fence about hockey into the playoff atmosphere, I just push them. Right. Right. And then they get hooked. It's all well, the playoffs are awesome. The playoffs yeah. are so great. All right. Let's get to the big one. The Mets. The New York Mets. Uh, why are you a Mets fan? Not a Yankees fan. So, this is a family roots thing. My dad's, my dad's family, they're from Maine. So, they were Red Sox fans. Um, and when they moved to New York, you only had a couple channels back in the day. Yeah. You could only watch the Yankees or the Mets. Um, and obviously, as Red Sox fans, you're not going to then switch to being Yankees fans. So, Mets it was. And there it is. Mets it is. <laughs> Um, I'm a Mets fan because of Mike Piazza. It's right. not really a great reason, but I will. <laughs> um, I have the first bullet is the Mets suck. Um, it is what yes. it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they, they, they show glimpses of hope. That's the thing. They, they show me that they can be good and then they just stick that knife right into my heart and it, it all falls apart. All so, apart. Are you excited or pissed off or upset or what are your thoughts on a 60 game season? I'm happy we're getting baseball. Um, I don't know if they're going to be able to go all the way through the season. I really have my doubts. I feel like a couple weeks in the positive tests are just going to be through the roof and they're going to have to shut down again. Um, But I love that we have baseball again, even if there's no fans, I, I think, I think it's awesome that that we're gonna get to watch, watch sports. So baseball is my like least watched sport. Um, I think 162 games, 
is way too long. Oh, it's crazy. It's uh, so 60 game season for me, I'm like, this is awesome. I can actually pay attention. Cause well, I don't start watching till September anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I, I honestly think that this is MLB's chance to show everyone because th- there have been discussions on shortening the season. I think this is, this is going to be the first step to that. Um, Rob Manfred, is he the worst commissioner in sports? <laughs> uh, no, I feel like Goodell is – I feel like he takes, takes that a lot. I know I'm putting you on the spot here. <laughs> but, yeah, no, I feel like, I feel like Roger Goodell, he, uh, he, he makes some interesting decisions. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, on the Hockey Podcast, we, we like to – give Gary Bettman trash but the way he handled starting the season the way he got the new CBA done so that NHL players could play in the Olympics I mean it's hard not to root for him so see like being a hockey fan and then watching how baseball handled starting the season again I was like Rob Manfred needs to get his stuff together (laughs) well the crazy thing the one of the craziest things right now is that Toronto doesn't have a place yeah like Canada said no and they're like all right we'll go to Pittsburgh Pittsburgh was like what do you mean we're not gonna let you here and now there's just the season starts tonight I know and they're looking at Baltimore and I I read that Baltimore might not let them play there you, you gotta think there's gotta be a, a minor league stadium that they could just put their stuff come to Greenville <laughs> Greenville Drive um, same question, season outlook, especially with a 60 game season. So it could really go either way. Cause the Mets have had great stretches, but then they also have awful stretches. So it just depends on how we get started and how it goes. Um, I don't know if you saw Stroman's now on the injured list towards calf. So Pitching staff is a little bit weaker. Um, the other day, the Mets had plus 1,000 odds to reach the World Series, which I kind of like. I kind of like those odds. So one day ago, uh, sportingnews.com, the Mets are plus 2,200 to win the World Series. It's, I really believe that it will either be the, the Yankees will win the World Series or a team from the NL East. Maybe I'll throw the Dodgers a boon. The Dodgers uh, with, with, with Mookie on, on that huge extension, they, they could take it all. Um, thoughts? At, what's the over-under? Actually, I can look that up. The over-under on Astros players getting hit. Oh, it's got to be through the roof. Uh, over-under Astros hit by pitch. Uh, ten and a half. I'm taking the over. Oh yeah, that can't be right. No, that's ten and a half. Let me let me click on this link. Here. Eighty and a half. Or the sixty game season might be under. That's a lot. Eighty three and a half. That is a lot in a sixty game season. That is a lot. I could see it. I could see it though. Yeah, I could like the little So, um. Altuve and Bregman took him back to back the other day, so yeah, I could they see. They said it. they're gonna. They said in the MLB said they're gonna be harsh on pitchers, but I mean, how can you? you how can you not be lenient? <laughs> they're cheaters. Yeah. Here's my thing. I want the Astros to win the World Series, and it's like it's like that movie where the villain just absolutely destroys the hero. It's, it's, it's Avengers Infinity War. If the Astros win it all, that's Thanos snapping. Yeah, that would be so awesome for baseball. Because people will tune in to watch them lose, and they will prove everyone wrong. <sighs> See, I loved, I loved that team. I thought like Bregman was awesome. I love Altuve, repping the short guys. Um, Correa is awesome. And then you got Verlander and Cole, who are two of the best pitchers in in the league. They're, the Astros were a great team to watch, and it, it really was upsetting to to hear that they were 
they were doing that. Well, how about the Nats going to Houston and beating them four times in Houston while they're cheating? It does not make sense. It does not no, make sense. Doesn't. So here's what I say as a Mets fan. I mean, you're, you're from New York, so tell me if I'm way off base. The Mets usually go on like an 18, 19, 20-game win streak every year just to fall short of the playoffs. So if we go on a 20-game win streak this year, we're going to be the number one seed in the playoffs. Yeah, that's what you hope. I mean, I don't know about a 20-game win streak, but it, they usually they, they have very good stretches, and then, like, June will just be terrible. There's no June in this season, that's so I, right. my, my hopes are high. <laughs> um, is DeGrom still the best pitcher in baseball? Until he doesn't win a Cy Young, yes. <laughs> Do you think he takes three straight? I, I don't know. I, that's tough. That is, that is very tough. Um, he's awesome. If he wins three straight, he is one of the best pitchers ever. And he's, he, is, he passes Tom Seaver as the best Mets pitcher of all time. It's, I think it's crazy. He cuts his hair and he wins. He's never lost to Cy Young with his haircut. That's a, that's a stat for you. That is a stat. Because the hair was a staple and people freaked out when he cut it. Well, it works. Yeah. All right. So the Mets World Series chance. That's what you're saying. On, on Zoom. Mets on World my Series podcast chance. for everyone to listen to. <laughs> Who wins the World Series? The, Met, the Metsies are going to win, baby. All right. <laughs> you heard it here first on July 23rd, opening day. Daniel Perkins calls it. By the way, if you're watching any Mets games this year at, at City Field, look for me as one of the cardboard cutout fans. You made it? I, well, I'm, I'm going to purchase one for 86 bucks. Uh, I feel like that's a – Sweet deal. I'll take it. Is that a season ticket holder? I mean, I, th- I think they just – I don't know exactly how it works. I don't know if you pick a seat or they give you a seat. Um, but 86 bucks, not bad. And uh, if a foul ball hits you, hits your cardboard cutout, they send it to you. I think that's a sweet deal. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 86 bucks. I might, I might purchase one. Yeah, it's not bad. Let's sit together. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll figure it out. All right. Um, let's transition sports. Uh, I'm, I'm digging it because I'm a big UFC guy. I talk about it all the time. And you have now started, like, getting into it more. You're texting me before all the fights. Just getting into it, yes. So it's hype. It's hype for me that I have someone else to, to watch it with. Yes. Um, now that you're like kind of a newborn fan, who's your favorite fighter so far? I'm loving, I'm loving Sugar Sean, baby. Oh, God. He's awesome. He's the most entertaining fighter right now. Well, he's fighting again on the Stipe DC3 card. It's amazing. It's amazing. Um, which that fight's going to be insane. And our friend Alex, born and raised in Cleveland. Big Stipe fan I know, other than my brother. And if he loses, I mean, we're going to have to take care of him. Yes. He's yes. going to be unstable. <laughs> yes. But, yeah. um, Sugar Sean O'Malley. Oh, God. He, I mean, he's, he just sleeps, guys. Like, he, the way he hits, it just – you hear it. You hear that, so, his walk-off KO against Eddie Wineland last month Pretty was awesome. nothing short of spectacular. He, he comes out with the rainbow hair, too. It's awesome. I love you know, it. So, everyone wants to see him get knocked out. And then when he's, he's starching dudes, it's like, oh, okay. You got you to gotta give him respect. But he's calling out former champs. He's calling out Garbrandt. He's calling out Cejudo. I mean, he's not there yet. <laughs> Garbrandt would, would knock him in the next week. I mean, uh, I, we'll see. It, back, in, back in March, when we were – at Charleston Sports Pub, uh, you, you said that you got to watch Sean O'Malley. He's, he's up on the rise. He's, he's going to be a big, big fighter. He's awesome. I love him. All right. So you've watched a couple fights. 
what's your favorite one so far, or have you seen a fight like previous uh, prior to Fight Island that you remember watching as a kid? So, um, I, I a couple weeks ago I loved the the Poirier Hooker one. Oh, that was fight of the year. It was amazing. They were just trading shots. Yeah, fantastic. That's a good fight. I'm, um, I'm glad you picked that one. But I would, when McGregor was was huge, I would I would watch all of his fights. Uh, my my one friend loves loves Conor McGregor. Uh, I mean, how can you not? You, you, I don't, but it's fine. You don't? Oh man! Uh, throwing, I did until he threw a dolly through a bus window. He like <laughs> completely ruined the card, and he that he wasn't even on. He talks <laughs> about Khabib's family, religion, and then Khabib chokes him out, and then he makes excuses. <laughs> I mean, yeah, okay. Okay, yes, yeah. And here's my thing with him. He, he thinks he deserves he, – he seriously is delusional. He thinks he deserves a title shot at 155. He just got choked out by the champ two years ago, comes back, fights at 170, and thinks he gets a 155 title shot. It doesn't even make sense. <laughs> All I'm saying is I want to see uh, him against Mayweather again. I honestly, Mayweather's slow. I mean, well, you see what's going on in the boxing world right now. Oh God, Mike Tyson's coming back, fighting Roy Mike Jones. Tyson's coming back, and then Nate Robinson is fighting one of the Paul brothers. What? Nate Robinson, the five eight basketball player? I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty. It sounds fake, right? But I'm pretty. I'm almost no. positive. That's why I saw. I thought the Mike Tyson news was fake, and then ESPN Boxing tweeted it, and I was like, oh, no, Mike. Like, <laughs> you're fi- – what? He's like 58 years old. Yeah, I know. It's, but, I mean, I, I could see it. I could see it. <laughs> but, yes, Nate Robinson is going to fight Jake Paul. And then they said there might be a MMA versus boxing fight on the undercard too, which makes me think that Henry Cejudo, who just retired, might fight on that card because him and Ryan Garcia have been going at it. I think he's the 135 champ in boxing. And Henry Cejudo and Mike Tyson are pretty close. So, I mean, it would make sense. (laughs) I just, I can't, I'm, I'm just hoping one of them doesn't die out there. Fortune Junior is old too. <laughs> yes, we both should stay retired. Um, uh, I mean, I don't watch it because I never got to watch my Tyson fight. I mean, the dude stuff of legend. My dad used to talk about getting people over, buying pizza, saving up money to buy his fights, and right. they would last twenty seconds. Right. So, all right, um, Robert Whitaker. Darren Till this weekend, Whitaker, the former champ. Till bumping up from 170, just beat Kelvin Gastelum uh, a couple months ago. Who you got? I don't know if you've been paying attention, but I'm going to throw it out there. I told you last week, I have whoever you have at this point. (laughs) At this point in my UFC fan career, whoever you have, I have. (laughs) So I'm really confident until I start putting money on it, and then it's it's almost like – Prime example, I tell you everybody on the main card who I think is going to win. There's five fights on the main card. I went four and one. The one I put money on was Holloway, and he got cheated. <laughs> he so did. He did. I put 20 bucks on Holloway because he's a top three favorite fighter of mine. He might be my favorite fighter, and he gets cheated. <laughs> yeah, that, that, was, uh, that was sad. That was sad. Uh, I don't know. Till, Till looked good, but Whitaker's former champ. So we'll see if Till's ready for the, the big show. There's, there's my thoughts. I don't know what to tell you. All right. Anything else on UFC? I, I think I think I'm good. Okay. All right. I'm gonna I'm putting you I, I'm putting you on the spot a lot tonight, but you're good. Yeah, you're good. Another one. Will there be Clemson football this season? Say it again. Will there be Clemson football all the season? I'm really starting to feel like it's going to be a no. 
I, why? Why would you say that? I, I, hate, I hate saying it, but the fact that they're not letting us on campus until September 21st yeah. does not make me feel good about it at all. So I was super confident, and then it was like Clemson was tested most players in the country, tested positive, and then all these like FCS conferences are saying no football. Right. Um, I mean, the SEC saying screw it, we're doing conference only and we're playing football. So, I, I mean, obviously, I would love to see football. Um, we're not going to be allowed at the games if there is football. I can almost like guarantee that. Um, so, I got two follow-up questions. Go ahead. What do you want to happen, as far as uh, conference only, no fans? playing in facilities like what do you want we're going to be so good our team is so good that I feel like we need to play I don't I don't care if I'm not allowed to go we need to play um I I've heard you know the rumors of the the spring season I don't know how that would work but as long as we're playing as long as Trevor Lawrence is out there for his junior year, I'm, I'm feeling good. So we were the favorite before Travis decided to come back. And then Travis Etienne, the best running back in the country, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm saying with complete 100% confidence, because yes. he is, decides to come back for his senior year. And now we have the best quarterback and the best running back in the country on the same team. It's crazy. I agree with you. We have to play because it's going to be – us and Ohio State in the National Championship. But that's the last segment, so I'm going to save your argument for that. Um, <laughs> the second follow-up question is what do you think will happen? Mm, what do I think will happen? Yeah. I don't, I, don't think, I don't think we're playing in the fall. Do you think it's spring? Do you think it's spring conference only do you think we're hopefully back to normal in the spring that we can have a little bit of fans i i think it'll i think it'll be spring i think i think the fall is going to get canceled and then we are going to be praying for the spring so we'll see why would you tell me that so not only are we seniors in college but be it main reason we went to this school is now being canceled and the semester we're graduating so we got to look for jobs and do set up for graduation we now have football basketball club wrestling which we're both involved in it's going to be the busiest semester in the history of semesters you know it is um but i'll take i'd, I'd take it I'd i'm take ready it. for uh, yeah i'm ready for it I'm mentally prepared to just grind. Yeah. All right. COVID's gone in this fantasy world we're about to jump into. COVID never happened. We're just we're breezing down towards college football. Clemson's going to be sold out. There's college football in this fantasy world we're jumping into. All right. All right. Uh, did you have a college team growing up? Um, I actually did not, because as I said before, New York is kind of weird with the uh, college football. Yeah. I would always, I would mostly watch like the Notre Dame games. Um, okay. Notre Dame uh, Penn, or Penn State. So, yeah, my friend Mike is from Long Island. He's a Penn State fan. Right. There's a, there's yeah. a lot. There's, it's, it definitely seems to be Notre Dame or Penn State if you didn't go somewhere. All right. Well, with that being said, who's in your top four? Who makes the college football playoff this year? So it's got to be us and Ohio State. And then three and four get a little tricky. Um, you know, you always want to throw Bama in there. Their, their quarterback situation, though, I, I, don't, I, I don't think it matters for them. I don't think it matters, actually, who's playing quarterback for Bama. I think they're always going to be stacked. I don't think I don't think we'll see LSU. Gosh, 
it's tough. It's a tough question. It, it really is tough, especially because I haven't even been focused on the teams as much as I am just about is it even going to happen. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. Who, who do you have after, after the obvious two? All right, so I got – Ohio State's going to be number one because their strength of schedule is by far tougher than ours. Yes. Um, I think if Bama runs the table, which I think they will, um, I mean, they might have one loss, but they'll probably still be ahead of us, even mm-hmm. undefeated. So I got Ohio State at one, us at – or Bama at two, us at three because we're going to – undefeated ACC champs. Yep. And four is going to be Texas. I think Texas finally gets the job done, beats Oklahoma this year. Sam Ellinger's senior year, they got a bunch of five stars on defense. And it's, I think Tom Herman's not on the hot seat, but it's his – It's those donors want wins, and they want to beat Oklahoma. And this is, this is the true test for Tom Herman. He's had a couple of years. His recruits are in. Uh, they're in the system. I think Texas gets it done. And hopefully we see a Clemson, Texas natty because talk about tradition. That would be crazy. That really would be. I'm tired of beating Ohio State. Yes. They're 0-4 against us. They're never going to beat us ever. <laughs> I'm just putting that on record. It's just never going to happen. So they might as well stop trying. But in reality, it's going to be us and Ohio State again because I think it's us, then them, talent-wise, and then it's it's a big gap between three and four. I mean, I would love to see Trevor battle it out against Justin Fields. I think that it's going to be awesome. Um, but the Longhorns, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, <laughs> they keep claiming they're back. I, I've not seen anything from them. So they beat – who did they beat in that bowl game? <sighs> yeah, I'm, who, now I'm blanking. They went like they won ten games. Um, they beat Georgia. They beat Georgia after Georgia was talking about how they should have made the playoff, and then they didn't. And then Texas just trashes them. And then Sam Ellinger's like, "We're back." And then they what? Go six and six this year? I mean, and then they they were not ridiculous. Bad. They were far from bad. <laughs> but I want Texas to be back so bad because I, I mean, my dad grew up a Longhorn fan. I'm a little biased, but. That burnt orange is the best color in college football. <laughs> See, the first – my first college football memory is the, the Rose Bowl, the USC. Oh, yeah. The Vince Young game. That's my first, like, that, that – I, I, I watched the game when ESPN had it, when they were doing their whole rewind thing during yep. quarantine. Um. Yeah, I, I would love for Texas to be back, especially the the Big Twelve. They just they beat each other up. They don't play defense. They they need they need they need something. So they need Oklahoma to stop beating everybody. But Oklahoma, like you said, they beat each other up. So Oklahoma drops a game to Kansas State, and then they like block everybody else from getting to the playoff. Yeah, but you have to throw them in because the Pac-12 beats its up beats itself up even more. Yeah. Oregon, is, Oregon is handed. Oregon is handed the playoff spot, and they blow it. They, they yeah. lose to Arizona State. The Pac-12 really – they the higher-ups in the Pac-12 must just be like, come on, guys. Yeah. Like, just, just come on. <laughs> Awful. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to do the same question. Who wins the Natty? 7-23-2020, Daniel Perkis. Who wins the natty? I, I, how can I not say Clemson? <laughs> I'd be the Tigers. Go Tigers. <laughs> I got Clemson winning. I don't even think it's close. I think it's another drubbing, like in 2018, uh, Clemson, Alabama. But I would love it. I would State. love to see it. All right. That's all I got. Anything else? Any, any, anybody you want to shout out or anything you want to plug? I let you go. Just want everyone to stay safe out there. Wear some damn masks. Hey, I agree with you. Um, but yeah, I I'm really hoping for sports. Uh, really hoping for college football, NFL. 
I I need it. I need it. Those past couple of months were terrible. Um, I, all I can say is let's go Mets. Pete Alonzo, MVP. Um, now that you bring up Pete Alonzo, I'm going to rant for five seconds. The fact that he beat Aaron Judge's home run, rookie home run record and didn't get the cover of the show is absolutely atrocious. <laughs> uh, you hear he's going to be mic'd up all season? Who, Pete Alonzo? He signed a contract. He's doing a YouTube thing. I'm pretty sure MLB's involved. Uh, he's mic'd up all season. That's awesome. Great. I hope I, I hope I hear some trash talk from him. He's, he's going to – he's got to be the captain at some point. I know MLB captains aren't really a thing anymore as much, but you, you see it every so often, and I could, I could totally see them doing it. He's, he's going to be he's, – he's like the big, the big thing right now. DeGrom, DeGrom's awesome, but like Pete Alonzo is, is the face of the Mets right now. I, I'm getting a Pete Alonzo yours from China. As I got my this, on right now. As soon as this Rona's kind of settled down, I'm getting I'm getting my China jerseys. <laughs> oh. All right, brother. It was a pleasure having you, and I can't wait to see you uh, in Clemson in person. We'll get yes. some golf in, and uh, we'll play some poker. And oh we'll, yeah, we're gonna have we're gonna try to have the best senior year we possibly can with all this going on. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm hoping, hoping for the best. Yeah. I can't wait to be down there. Got a couple weeks left. Yeah. So stay safe and can't wait to see you. Can't wait to see you. All right, brother. Thanks for joining and I'll see y'all later. Peace. See ya.